Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Sven and I talk a lot with you about photo and filmmaking. All the tools you're gonna use, all the stuff that's cool, all the new stuff that comes around and once or twice something that's quirky. Yes, quirky. Like weird lens baby lenses, reflections, bokeh messing up stuff, anamorphic lens and all that stuff. So, without further ado, let's talk about this, this little sucker here, or this one. This is the new Fuji X-T30. It's like the small scissor of the X-T3, but with all the great features. So today we are going to talk about this camera, how you can use an external recorder to really pump up the game of this camera and I'm going to show you a little bit of the stuff I filmed outside to really show you the difference. Um, I personally use the Atomos recorder or a Atomos recorder and I'm going to show you that one real quick. It's, geez, it's this one, it's the Ninja. <laughs> Sorry got distracted for a second and we are gonna hook these two up and I'm gonna show you the difference between recording 8-bit internally with this little camera and by connecting it to this one how you can pump it up to 10-bit 422 out of the gate the biggest the single biggest reason you would use 10-bit for me as a filmmaker is that you have so much more room for editing if you record in LUT or a flat color profile because you have way more color depth. You go from roughly 16 million colors in 8-bit to more than a billion in 10-bit because you have four times the color depth by each channel which means you have a lot more room to get these tones really really perfect and especially in the highlights that can be a challenge in 8-bit. But the reason you don't see in other videos, for example, a huge difference between 8-bit and 10-bit if you see it side by side on a comparison is because, first of all, YouTube uploads in 8-bit and most of the monitors are 8-bit. So with HDR coming widely spreading this year, the next year, it's going to be a difference for you to see because HDR is 10-bit like the monitors and stuff. And also, even though you cannot see a difference side by side, you actually will appreciate the difference you can make in editing to make the colors right, to get the look or the LUT just the way you want it to be, then export it and have it the way you want to have it. So, not just rambling about that, I'm going to show you a little bit of that setup, what you need for it to work, how you connect it all. So get toasty. Thanks, Peter, for the Canadian expression. No. And sit back, relax, and let me show you how it's done. So what you need is you need your camera, of course, and you need the recorder. So what happens if you go from a camera, from an internal recording to an external recording, you go from this to this. actually this so because the amounts of data that you collect and produce externally are way bigger you go from SD cards or CF cards to actually SSDs which like technically SD cards are SSDs as well um, but like way bigger I mean I have the one terabyte version and um, I'm going to show you on the screen how much record time that is in ProRes 4 to 2, um, but I think like an hour or something like that, which can really add up in storage. So I actually bought a couple of those. Um, you need like a cage where you can put it in. It's this. Oh, sorry. It's another plate. It comes from Atomos as well. It's where you put it in. I'm going to show you how to do it. And then you can plug it inside of the recorder. You need a battery, you can just standard monitor batteries or whatever. Um, and you need a cable. Now, with that cable, 
not every HDMI cable works. I bought it from Atomos directly, but honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it because I think I paid a hundred bucks for that cable or 120. And I think you can get almost the identical version from Amazon basics. Um, but not like not the cheapest cheapest version they have like a basics pro version or something like that i have to look it up maybe i, I can link it below um which by the way is not an affiliate link i don't make money off of that it's just like i want to show you an alternative to this one um but the reason you can't use like your standard five buck hdmi cable is that can't handle that amount of data that you sent from your camera to your recorder that's basically the reason so I'm going to show you how to set it up and yeah, then we get out, we shoot some stuff and then we look it up in the computer. So what you do is uh, pretty simple. I take this one, just a little connector uh, on the bottom that you can uh, use for your hot shoe and just a screw for the recorder. So just very simply put it up, then just put it on top so you can plug it in you have in and out so you can send the stuff out to the micro or mini um, HDMI so the only thing like what I always do is the cool thing with these recorders you can record on this SSD, but you can also record like the 8-bit 420 version on your card. So I would always recommend doing that just in case, just to have a backup. Um, and also that you can have um, it for comparison. You can compare like the same shot, the exact same shot without uh, shooting it side by side. So that's my setup. I'm going to put that on the side for a second because let's pop open that SSD. So it's quite convenient, so you don't mess it up. So let's remove that. Um, I think it's there to protect the contacts. Thank you. And then we take this. Um, these boxes, I ordered like a five pack of those on Amazon. It's like 40 bucks. Um, and how it works is you can you put it in and with that slot here, you plug it into the recorder. So you put it in and then what you see on these sides are the, I don't know if you can see it, are the holes for the screws to put in to hold this in place because right now, as you can see, it moves around and that will be really, really bad for connection. So you need to screw it tightly. So there are four, four screws. You just put this one on top of that. And then you have this, that's so funny. This tiny little screwdriver. I mean, look at that. No, I can't do magic, sorry. Um, and you have these, wait a second, these four screws. And what you have to do is be, be careful because you actually put in a screw into um, your hard drive. So don't use too much force, just tight enough that it doesn't move. Done and done. So this is your hard drive. Now, as you hear, nothing moves around. And how you install it into this is on your back. Let me see it on my monitor. On your back, you have the you have the connector here, and what you do is on the side, you just plug it in. It's like a hot, it's like a shoe. You just plug it in, see? And then you have to click, and that's it. If you, if you look at that, this is not the most beautiful way, because these hard drives, like the standard hard drives, are a little bit bigger than the recorder, because it's so tiny, small, and compact. You can get smaller ones, like Atomos Mini, I think um, they are called, but they are so expensive, like 
I mean, that one terabyte SSD is like 100 bucks or 110, and the others are like three times that. So just for, for the sake of the look, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. Just buy three of those instead of one of the others. Put it in, doesn't matter it anyway. And also it protects the bigger HDMI thing a little bit. So that's your setup. And I would say before I talk to you uh, too much about theory inside, let's go outside, let's take this for a spin and let's see what we can come up with. Peace. So as you can see, there's a big difference between recording internally and externally. And in the next video, we are going to dive in even deeper and explore the ways how we can edit that, where are the differences, and if it's worth it to go that extra mile and invest that extra money in an external recorder in order to pump up your pictures and your image quality. So, if you like this video and if you have anything to contribute, please go down in the comment section, like and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified when you have the second part of this video about the Fuji X-T30. See ya!